Entitled future Sil said, I'm not pretty enough to be a mo at her wedding. So my brother called off the wedding, and she went absurd and ruined her life, and blamed us for everything. Look, my brother M38 Aaron, is super smart bookwise, but can be a fool when it comes to affairs of the heart. I am not mad at him about this, and I don't want to hurt him, but Heather F27 is the Sith Lord of a woman, powerful, manipulative, and ugly underneath their masks. It stinks more because I introduced them. Heather and I F32 met playing D&D, and we stayed in touch after that group disbanded. She met Aaron at my birthday party, and they dated in secret for a year before telling me and our mutual friends. They got engaged at my next birthday party, and he asked me to be his best woman, a female best man because he and I have always been incredibly close. And Heather frowned at him and said that was ridiculous, and I obviously should be her mo since we're friends and a female and woman go on the bride's side. The moment became awkward, and I told them I was happy to stand for them on either side, because, at the end of the day, it's about them as a couple, not individuals, and whatever they wanted worked. I'm an idiot. I can list in great detail all the disturbances and the force that should have told me she was far more trouble than she was worth, even if she were encrusted in diamonds. But my brother had been deliriously happy, and I rolled a one on insight, I guess. The short list of problems was that Heather assumed the Mo was also the wedding planner, point of contact to the bride, free makeup artist, and paid for the bridesmaid dresses and the bachelorette party. I compromised by committing to doing the makeup for free. I did modeling in my twenties and know how to make do, helping plan the wedding with her and my brother. But I could not financially pay for the dresses she wanted I would pay for mine, but not the others and the party, so I offered to do one. And she picked the dresses the more expensive, and I paid it without complaint. She had all the bridesmaids, except for me pay for the whole bachelorette trip, even those who couldn't come but blasted me in the group chat about it, like apologizing for the cost of the trip, since OP's not financially contributing, which led to the girls asking me how and why I ended up not paying anything. Things like that kept happening. I am going to pause here and say my brother is a senior staff engineer at a huge tech company and teaches programming at a huge school, so he makes plenty of money. When I asked my brother why he wasn't helping pay for stuff at the wedding, he looked incredibly puzzled and asked what I meant. I immediately shut up, realizing I stepped in it, and he said Heather insisted she pay for her half of the wedding and they joint pay the joint parts cake venue etc. To say to her haters, she's not marrying him for his money. I know I am the ah for stepping in on that one, I admit. There's more, but I don't want this to be a novel, so I will jump to the part I might be morally ah for. I hosted the bridesmaids and Heather at a planning party she wanted, and we sat, working on odds and ends and drinking lots of wine, when one of the girls, Amber F20, asked if she could change her hair color. Her own wedding is coming up, and she got a long waitlisted spot with a salon on her wishlist to dye her hair, and she wanted to go red. For a note, I am black and use weave to shade and style my hair in crimson red twists. Amber said she would want to know about my shade, and that it complemented my skin tone. Heather chuckled a bit at that, and I kind of looked at her like, what? And she said that it was fine, and she's no bridezilla, but she would prefer only one of us look that tacky. I felt hurt as Heather knew me before I went red a year ago, and back then told me how great I looked, and that I glowed, and now I'm tacky. I asked her if she meant it that way, and she shrugged and said, it's about the people, not how good they look. I didn't get it, and the other girls started chiming in, and Heather just said, oh my god, calm down. I didn't mean anything wrong. I won't let OP ruin my wedding entirely. It's really okay. We are all going to start looking different in our thirties, etc. I was the oldest of all the girls there, and I kind of chuckled it away and said Heather was the one who gives me compliments on how much I still look young, and like I did when I did fashion modeling nothing big, just commercials and small local runways, as it once was my dream to be like on Victoria's Secret or whatever. And she snorted something like, you can't do runway now, and you know it. Okay. At this point, I flat out asked her if she had something to say to me, and she said that since I had been so sensitive about her asking me to do things be a wedding planner, pay for the party etc. For her wedding, she didn't want to bring it up, but she wanted me to change my look back to when you were so pretty like when we met, which meant going back to my natural light brown hair, losing weight I am 5'7 and 120 pounds, and wearing shapewear to fit in a smaller dress. Then she said, look at these lovely ladies right? It would mean a lot to me if you all could shine up there. I said that was hurtful, and I liked how I look now. I had lots of body issues trying for that dream in my twenties and skipped meals, drank too much and worse, and hated my body. Now I do have curves, and I love them. 
I offered to wear a wig for the wedding if my hair color was an issue. And she just got quiet and changed the subject. To keep everyone from watching me get upset. I just shook the wine bottle, laughed something about it getting empty, and said I was going to the kitchen to get a fresh bottle. Heather was there after a couple minutes and started saying, Hey, you know I love you no matter how you look babe, and I just shot, but I look tacky. And she shrugged and said that's why she didn't want to ask me. She knew I wouldn't focus on anything other than perceived slights. I handed her the new wine bottle to bring in, and I stepped outside to calm down. It's still on my mind. The wedding is this summer, and I am kicking myself for being sensitive. It's messing with my head. Now I can't even dream of standing up in front of everyone we all know in a bright dress. The mo dress is a different color and cut than the other bridesmaids the way I am. But a part of me thinks I am letting her under my skin and should not worry about how I look. I don't want to be mo regardless though. If I step down, I don't even know what I would tell my brother. Sorry for the nerdy references. It's a coping mechanism. Edit. A couple of facts and things I didn't think to add. Brother has a prenup. It wasn't really a trust thing, but he just figured it would be there for them to point at and refute the rumors that she was with him for money. And I am told she enthusiastically agreed. She does not have a full-time job. She works retail and does some theater work at my job as an actor. She lives with her sister and her sister's spouse in the city. As she is in school, she took a few years to go from high school to college. Her sister is kind of how we met as she is part of my gaming group. I do not work in software, nor do I make a lot of money compared to my brother. I am single, live alone, and make enough money in a non-profit theater to survive. Aaron, and I don't have any other family. We've been each other's family since I came out as bisexual, and our grandfather disowned me. Aaron went without contact out of support for me. We are also not biological siblings, as Aaron is adopted, and I am a miracle baby. Our dad walked out when I was a kid, and our mom passed away when I was a teen, TLDR. My former friend and future still thinks I look tacky and need to lose weight, so I don't feel comfortable being Mo and being in the pictures. Comments. Buttered Crumpet 09. You do get that she has you as Mo, because she does not want you hanging out and spending that time with your brother, right? OP. I actually never thought about this, but it makes sense. I have barely had time to be with my brother, and only get to occasionally text here and there. My brother is great. But I worry if I even try to explain, he will get defensive. He's really the only family I have left. BD10D528. Heather is gaslighting you. She's making mean comments, and then acting like you are overreacting to what she says. NTA for wanting to step down. However, know that she'll make you the villain regardless of what you decide to do. And if you choose to step down, she'll say she knew you would flake. And planning was so much harder, because you misled them, while also making shtty comments about how she's glad to not have someone so tacky at the wedding party. Also, 120 pounds at 5'7 is slim, so she can foe about wanting you at your modeling weight. OP. When I was in my 20s, I was underweight. It was unhealthy. I will never go back to that. I don't want to ever go back to that. I was an unhappy person, vying for a goal that wasn't good for me mentally or physically. Heather knew that, which is why it hurt more than if a stranger said it. Fuster cluckered. Personally, I wouldn't go and tell my brother exactly why and what he's marrying. That you will go to his next marriage. Instilled ink. Heather is a total B. You are an NTA. Either way you go, she is going to make things miserable. Personally, I'd want out of the wedding party, and I'd likely try never to speak to her again. Or the rest of the friend group, TBH, like she was horribly rude to both you and the other friend who wanted to change her hair color, and no one called her out. Everyone just sat there and took that abuse? Ouch. If you go that route, I'd suggest a simple message to your brother explaining that you're sorry, but due to some extremely hurtful things that Heather has said, you just can't be at the wedding party. I'm sure she will still talk crap about you to him, but at least you'd have given him a preemptive heads up. OP. The other girls did try to speak up, but Heather shut them down quickly. Some even texted me after apologizing for it happening. One backed Heather but that's the only bridesmaid who isn't somehow a mutual acquaintance or friend of ours and is Heather's BFF, and she has hated me from the beginning as I am Mo instead of her. Rian one made it. Honestly, you should all quit. What is the downside to bailing on this loony? She can't do jacked if you all quit. But you know this wedding shouldn't happen to begin with. Work on that. OP actually, she comes with money, and they can make things unpleasant. Her dad is also a raging racist I am African American and he didn't like Aaron since he is from outside our country. Update. My brother knows everything now, six hours later. 
I immediately got comments saying the same thing. I would be the awe to not tell my brother the truth. It was devastating, and I admit some of the comments were worded in a way that really hurt. But at the end of the day, I was asked if I was okay with Aaron marrying a person who would hurt him, and something in my brain clicked. I love my brother more than anything, and I realize now that I was being spineless and selfish to not come to him with this. From the beginning of my being Mo, Heather monopolized my time. I can pinpoint exact moments when I was slowly pushed out of regular contact with Aaron. If I was not working or doing my side gigs, all my time was spent on the phone with her or footing the bill at dinners and lunches with her over the wedding. Someone mentioned that she was trying to keep me and Aaron from spending time, and I realized they were right. Anytime I called him and she was there, she would take the phone to talk about wedding stuff etc. I would be so worn out at the end of my days that I wouldn't even reply to texts. I feel so stupid. I was a coward and so afraid of losing my only family. I forgot to be family to him, and that's hard to even type, but it's true. Aaron called me early. Apparently, a bridesmaid who was at my house the night I mentioned in my last post. Sophia F26, who was one of our good friends, apparently suggested he reach out to me. But when he asked why, she didn't say. I didn't realize it, but I have been miserable since that party at my house. I didn't know how much I seemed off. It was brought to my attention how, far out, I seemed in public, and how withdrawn I've been in general. Aaron called, and asked if I was alright. I know the wedding is stressful, Heather has been a wreck, and I snapped and just started crying and hung up. He was at my place within the hour, and I told him everything. I don't remember seeing him so mad in my life. I am skipping a bunch to be brief. He asked me how much I spent on the wedding, and I just handed him my phone with my bank app and the bridesmaid chat all open and he scrolled and asked me why I would not mention this to him. I explained, and he shook his head. He wrapped me in a hug, told me not to worry, and ordered us food. After he left, Sophia texted me and Aaron in a new group chat, with the three of us some recordings from when she was making TikToks and the like at various bridesmaid events with Heather in the background and nothing more. I saw it, and Aaron saw it. But he hasn't said anything yet other than I will use a fake name for myself as I have the others. Francesca, turn off your phone if you can. I will drop by tonight. I put my phone on do not disturb, and I'm on my couch, drinking and waiting. Quick random update. I am a bottle of wine in, so forgive my dyslexia. I am scrolling through Reddit and Facebook, and Heather has blocked me on Facebook. Through an app for my texts, I can see she's texted me many times. I have opened nothing, and I won't until Aaron arrives. In the meantime, I am truly in good tears over your support and advice. I was never a strong person that was our mom, but you and my friends make me feel strong, and I cannot express my gratitude. I will update when I can, but it may be tomorrow, as I am passing that line of tipsy into more than tipsy. But seriously. Thank you all so much. Second update. My Venmo popped up, and Heather's sister, Haley, just sent me money. No description on it. Just a bride emoji. Also, Aaron says he is on the way. As I am on Facebook, I am seeing more of the girls in the bridal party in different chats, having issues with Heather. I am more of an Instagram Twitter gal, so I never even saw it. I am messaging them back now. Comments. Alien false flag. It's time for your brother to call off the SHT show. Okay consideration 1 in 284. I suspect he is. Snoop it's 873. Sophia is the real one. Update. Background info. One day later. Star date. The next morning y'all encouraged my nerdy side. Sorry, lol. Happy weekend, everyone. I was shook at how much my notifications blew up more than the Death Star. Bear with me as I sort through everything because it's a lot. And I had a lot of wine last night while stressing. And today I am slightly paying for that. First, some background that came up in the comments. Some of you called it that. But yes, I suffer from an abusive relationship myself. He doesn't even deserve a nerdy fun name. So we will just call him Jeff. Jeff was emotionally and physically harmful to me and encouraged my dieting in my 20s constantly calling me fat etc. And that was him being nice. Whenever I tried to leave, he would either intimate me, gaslight me, or both. The short of it is, Aaron finally figured out what was happening as I had gone so low contact with him. And let's just say you wouldn't like Aaron when he's angry. Jeff is so far in my rear view that one would think he's a mirage. Also, I finally watched all the recordings Sophia sent Aaron and me. They are just snippets that she never posted due to lighting, noise, or something being said that she didn't want on the internet. But with Heather somewhere in it, or heard in the background. Not all of it was her hurling insults at me, as some were from outings I could not attend, 
and she put down others. I mentioned before that Sophia is close to both Aaron and me, that we have sibling-like love for one another, and that Sophia is gay. One video is just Sophia holding her phone down as Heather explains why Sophia's girlfriend can't be at the wedding. You guessed it. Heather checked the homophobe box. She just hit bigot bingo. I am so embarrassed that I ever thought she was my friend. Many other videos were Heather's put-downs to me. Sophia even managed to get the tacky convo from the point, after Heather called me tacky the first time on. There is much more to add. I will give another update on what happened last night. Update. Ding dong the witch is dead. By the time Aaron got back to my place, I was less tipsy and more wine drunk. He looked at me and said I needed to lay off the celestial absinthe D&D joke. He looked exhausted. I apologized as I felt I had imploded his life, and he snapped at me something like, don't you dare apologize for telling me the truth ever, and went on about how hurt he was. I never told him about any of it. I apologized, and he reminded me of Jeff and how bad things could have gone if he hadn't figured out what Jeff was doing to me. I suffered in silence, and things could have escalated, and he could have lost me. I am all he has, and he would never have forgiven me or himself. I told him he was right, and from now on, there will be no lies or secrets between us. He made me pinky swear, like we did when we were kids. He then told me what happened. He got to his house, and listened to every single one of the recordings. He had sent himself items and screenshots from my phone, including all the payments he could find for what I spent and calculated. He wrote me a check, and the total is staggering. I don't know if everyone is like this, but sometimes it is hard to keep a running tally on a specific expense over time, if you just spend a little here, and a little there over a year. But let's just say the check will replenish my lost savings, and then some. He then called Heather over under the guise of wanting to have dinner with her. When she arrived, he was sitting in his living room and acting casual. He was recording the whole conversation on his computer nearby, where he teaches tech. So the audio was perfect when he played it back to me, except for when Heather was moving about his house doing things here and there in other rooms as she talked to him. But he stayed on the couch by the desk. He was casual and asked about the wedding planning. She lamented how much there was to do, but how excited she was. He asked about me. How is Francesca doing? I haven't been able to catch up with her. And Heather said something about how she is trying to coach me on being a mo, but that it's fine as she just wants him to be happy and have his adoptive sister in the wedding. Aaron, and I never use the word adoptive. He is simply my brother. Adopted or not. I never knew she used that term when I wasn't around. I can't quite pin it down as to why there's nothing wrong with him being adopted or anything. But it just didn't sit well with me. He kept it chill, asking her questions he already knew answers to, and she clearly would lie to him. He brought up the money, and maybe he should contribute since he does make more, and he doesn't mind that's when the big lies happened. She claimed to have worked many shifts and saved a lot of money and the like to pay for her half. Then she blamed me on the super expensive bridesmaid dresses, claiming I made a big deal about not looking my best in the much more affordable dresses she had wanted etc. But made it out like she compromised by yielding to what I wanted even though it was more expensive. I am making this really short, but she made me out to be this diva and would imply how I must talk him into buying me expensive things. And that the bachelorette was going to be her biggest expense because I am a city girl and would not stand for a small dinner, which is what Heather wanted. Absolute wookie poo poo, but whatever. Aaron toyed around a little longer before saying, Hey, you should come listen to this, and started playing some of the videos. You can hear Heather saying things like, Who is that? That sounds like me, but that's not me. But he kept playing them until she just said, What is this about? He said he knew the truth, and was giving her the chance to tell him the truth. She pretended she didn't know what he meant, and Aaron just said, Allow me to be very clear. I know you've been lying to me, so tell me the truth. She started crying and asking why he's doing this to her, and what she did to deserve this, and he got angry. He stated that lying wasn't even the worst thing about how he treated me. His sister and Heather's supposed friend. A lot was said between them, but he never raised his voice, and at one point she was screaming, and he said, I won't even speak to you if you're just going to yell. They argued more, and he told her to get out, and that the wedding was off. He said he expects her to pay me and him back for all the expenses, or he will bring her to court. And then, as she was crying, he called her sister Haley to tell her that Heather is on her way back home, and laid out everything. So Haley knew exactly why they were calling it off. The recording ends there, but according to Aaron, he put Heather's things in her sister's car for her yes. I am peddly specific about Heather, not owning a car and locked her out. She stayed at the door, crying for a minute, and left. 
Aaron says he took a moment to cool down when the drama started back up. Out of all the bridesmaids, only one was singularly Heather's and not a mutual friend of ours, a friend of mine or Aaron's. Kim hated me at the very beginning because she is Heather's true best friend and should have been the Mo, but made up some crap that I threw a fit. I wasn't important at the wedding, so after long suffering, Heather bent a knee and made me the Mo. Kim called Aaron and yelled at him that Heather was at her house, heartbroken and depressed, because the other girls had lied to him to make her look bad. Heather is willing to forgive him and take him back, but he needs to acknowledge the truth. She said Heather would only get mean to defend herself from us ganging up on her, and that Kim witnessed it firsthand. She told him I was the worst one and would make snide remarks to Heather about taking my brother away from me, and how now I was alone and had no one. She implied something else that I won't repeat here because it's disgusting. But a hum, Luke and Space Mom, if you know you know. Then she said that Heather is also pregnant, and that the stress cannot be good for her or the baby. Aaron said that he was almost considering talking to Heather and seeing things from her perspective, because he was dumb, and he did think he had loved her. But it was the last parts that snapped him out of it. He said if Heather perceived she was being attacked, he almost felt bad. But he also knew me well enough to know that I am far too non-confrontational. Then wham baby, he told Kim that this was impossible as Heather's rule was no intercourse until marriage. And he respected that. But now Kim and Heather are claiming that he was drunk one night. And he and Heather did the deed and must not remember as he was practically passed out for most of it. Which I won't begin to even touch that here. But I have never felt more angry in my life. Aaron doubts this. As he has never been so drunk that he would forget things. And on top of that, why would she keep it a secret from him after the fact? There is more to it. But those are the cliff notes. It was late. And Sophia couldn't come over. So we FaceTimed her to thank her. She and her girlfriend were eager to hear what happened. And Aaron told the whole thing over again. Sophia's girlfriend, Letty, told Aaron to immediately demand a medical confirmation of pregnancy and a paternity test, as well as have Heather pinned down the when and where. She reminded Aaron that he has cameras all over his home and in the main rooms, so this can be easily disproven, but to also tread carefully because she can see a mile away that if Aaron refuses to be conned by that Medusa arse homeworlder wannabe, she will try to spin it, making him an aggressor. She is pre-law, and her dad is an attorney. So Aaron will call him today and speak to Heather only through his attorney going forward. We also opened some of Heather's texts to me together and screenshotted each one. But I was sleepy because of the wine and fell asleep. When I woke up, Aaron was on my tablet, still reading and screenshotting, and he seemed oddly chipper. I asked what's up, and he informed me that Heather's sister Haley reached out, and will be going to the doctor with Heather to see if Heather is really pregnant. But Haley is doubtful as she never mentioned it, nor has Haley noticed any signs. It seems Haley is on his side and over her SHD. He also wants to thank Sophia and the other bridesmaids for helping us and is thinking about keeping the venue and just having a party in place of the wedding. But he isn't sure. Honestly, I don't think he slept and he looks awful. So I cancelled all my plans and I'm going to make sure he rests and takes care of himself. Nothing has been decided. But he now sees how manipulative Heather can be. I know he is heartbroken, but he's putting on a face for everyone. I know far too well that eventually he will need to mourn the relationship, and I am determined to be here when he does. I think that's everything for now. I wanted to share with everyone who has been so supportive of us, even if it meant kicking me in the pants, to get me to be honest with my brother. To my fellow browncoats and rebels, thanks for helping me feel a part of a broader nerdum, it feels awesome. TLDR. Weddings are off. The Geth was defeated. But she won't let him go. Comments. Datga Malcolm. Diamond. Yeah, this is not over. Aaron, for sure, better lawyer up, etc. Also, if he was blackout drunk, didn't Heather basically admit to sang him if they indeed did the deed that way? Anyway, Heather can F off. Shelly 895. Yes, that would be 100% sa. Heather is really not the smartest gal, admitting to sang someone to justify a fake pregnancy. But I'm willing to bet she's one of those women who thinks men can't be sawed at least not by women. So she sees nothing wrong with that. Update. Empire Strikes Back Sith in Law TLDR My brother's ex is finding new ways to make us miserable, and I don't think there is anything to do to stop her right now. Hi everyone. Thanks again for all the supportive comments and messages, and for checking on us. I apologize for not updating, but so much has happened, and to be honest, I have been reeling from one thing to another. Fortunately, not all of it is bad, so I will try to get right into it. There is too much to re-explain.
so the link is an easier way to catch anyone up on the situation. I am very blue, so sorry if I am not as quippy as usual. Again, dyslexic, and at the risk of sounding like a functioning. Alcoholic, yes, I am drinking wine while writing this. At least I am consistent. Let's start with the good stuff first. Letty and Sophia are engaged. It wasn't too long ago, actually, that we were all having drinks together with my brother Aaron, and Sophia had to get up to go to the bathroom. I decided that I would go with her because I also needed to go, but didn't want to break the seal, so we both went, and I found out from Aaron later that Letty had told him that she plans on proposing, and that she's really excited about it as she and Sophia have talked about getting married many times, and they wanted to get married before Letty gets ill. I won't share too much about it, and I honestly don't get or understand it all anyway, but Letty has a high chance of coming down with an illness in her family, and Sophia wants to legally be able to make medical choices etc. Letty believes it's many years off. Probably will over a decade. But had a cousin come down with it, and declined swiftly, far too young, and it spooked them. But Letty wants the proposal and wedding to be magical for Sophia, who didn't leave her immediately upon learning this. TBH, I never knew this before, and I think Letty keeps it close to the vest. My heart broke when I learned about this. But I am hoping that she beats the odds and never falls ill. It's a small possibility, according to Letty. But there is one. The good news is that Letty was focusing on the proposal and living life with her love as long as she was alive. And I think that's so beautiful. Letty waited until Sophia and I went to the bathroom and said to Aaron that she had something she wanted to ask him. She knew that the venue for his now-canceled wedding was not refundable, and that he was trying to figure out what to do with it. And she offered to pay him the money he would lose if he had canceled the venue to then use the venue for her wedding with Sophia, should Sophia say yes. Aaron was overjoyed by this and absolutely said yes to that without hesitation. But he refused to have her pay for anything, and said that it would be his wedding gift to them. When he told me about this after Letty and Sophia went home for the night, there was a pep to him. The venue was a sore spot. All the stuff for his wedding was a sore spot. But this was the first time I saw him truly happy about anything connected to it. Letty planned to propose on a Saturday. Sophia grew up with a parent, who was a puppeteer who even worked for Jim Henson's company at one point and she has a great love for live theater, especially if it has puppets in it or movies that have puppets in them. She even has some of her own puppets, but she always says that she's no puppeteer, she just loves them. Letty has commissioned two puppets that look like Letty and Sophia as a gift. She took Sophia to a showing of the labyrinth with Jennifer Connelly and David Bowie, which is one of Sophia's childhood favorites. Letty prompted them to go for a walk at the park nearby, where they used to hang out when they first started dating. Erin and I, along with a couple other friends, had set up something of a scavenger hunt, using details of their love story together that led to the riverside, where they had their first kiss. Letty proposed, and it was beautiful. Sophia managed to choke a yes out through her tears. Aaron is glad the money for the venue will be used for something good. And my sapic arse loves to see two close gal pals of mine living such a romantic life successfully. Aaron told me privately that he will also use all of the vendors that he hasn't cancelled yet that were meant for his wedding and see if he can retain them for the girls' wedding as well. He will talk with the girls about it once they are ready to start planning. He was so happy, his eyes were watering. He seemed really happy, to be honest. Even when I wrote down that I knew that he would need to mourn his relationship, and everything that's happened to him, I had no idea how hard it would be to see him suffer. He put on a brave face for a while, and then one day I went to visit him because I had offered to make him dinner, and he was very quiet over text and hadn't replied, which isn't like him. This was maybe a week or two after my last post. I went over anyway with all of the groceries, just assuming that he got caught up as he had thrown himself a lot into work and often got a little carried away. I would usually get a quick text by the end of the workday like, oh hey sorry, got caught up with work, etc. And we would resume plans, but this day I didn't get it. When I got to his house, he was drunk, and I mean drunk. I had never seen him this gone before. What I was able to piece together from his ramblings was that it all finally hit him and he felt used, stupid, and a failure. Not just because of Heather, and that whole situation, but because of what I went through, and the fact that he couldn't protect his own sister. He was crying and told me I was all he had. He had failed me, and he would never forgive himself. There's a bunch more to it, but that was the crux. I would like to think I am not a hateful person. We were not raised to hate. We were raised to rise above such things. Hurt people hurt people, and we should spread love. But when I tell you that seeing my brother, my lifelong best friend, the person never not in my corner, breaking down like that so broken over Heather's actions, I truly felt this creeping feeling therapy sussed out for me that was deep, festering, unadulterated hate. She hurt me, 
Okay, I found that I am much tougher than I thought. But where the line is, where my rage came in, where this awful, deep pit of fire that makes me scared of my own feelings comes in, is that she broke my brother's heart. There is a very ugly side of me that wants to make her feel like he is hurting. I am not proud of that at all. In fact, I am ashamed of it. But I would be a lying cesspool if I said I didn't. I got him cleaned up, and he slept while I cooked. He didn't eat much and didn't sober up until the next day. He remembered everything, and was incredibly embarrassed, red in the face from it, and said he hated that I had to see him like that, and it wasn't fair to me. This is coming from the guy who picked me up the first time I got SHT faced at a public bar when I was a teenager. He apologized the second he woke that day, saying he had whiskey to unwind as he felt tense and upset, and the next thing he knew, he was looking through photos of his time with Heather and just lost it. I assured him it was alright. This wasn't his fault, and I was here for him. He shut down a bit, withdrew for a while after that incident, and left all his booze at my place as he wanted to sober up and go to therapy, which I was grateful for. I am also going to therapy FYI, as it was suggested a lot in the comments. Now, I'm sure everyone is wondering about Heather. God, Heather, is a fake name, but I still hate typing it. Her sister Haley tried to force Heather to go to a doctor's appointment to confirm the so-called pregnancy. Heather agreed until Haley wanted to be told the results by the doctor and not relayed by Heather. Heather immediately refused, color me shocked. Haley then told her sister that it was either this option or for Heather to pack her crap and leave her home. I am told that's when Heather folded. They went, and the crazy bit is that while Heather was not pregnant, she was. I don't know how Haley came to find this out. But she called Aaron to tell him that Heather had an abortion in December. Heather, at the time, had told Aaron she was going traveling with some friends for a week or so. Kim had taken her. Aaron was shook up by this and really started to question whether he could have been the father. But the only way that could be true is that Heather and Kim were telling the truth about Heather getting him so drunk and into bed. He kept saying that he really doesn't think that it is true, but if she was pregnant, it really messed him up. He got tested for STDs, and a few weeks later he was cleared of all that worry, but he hadn't quite been right since. He would be a bit short-tempered, not explosively, just curt and angry or annoyed by little things. For example, and to share some news, I have a boyfriend now. We will call him Han because, why not? Han is super handsome and sweet, and he has been an acquaintance through my theater circles for a long time. We both joined the same D&D group or campaign about five months ago, and usually the group plays weekly. Han always made me smile and laugh. Our characters are exes in the campaign storyline, and the banter is hilarious role-playing. When the Heather stuff started ramping up, he asked if I was alright. I didn't share back then. But he kept making efforts to make me smile. And one day, I finally shared. And he didn't interrupt. Just listened. He jokes a lot like I do, to deflect or dispel discomfort but he was deadly serious as he listened to me. He was super sweet and took me to drinks after D&D that week, and we got to chatting. It was nice to just chat away and lose myself in just existing with a person. We ended up kissing at my car after he walked me out, and we went on a full-fledged date the next day. I won't bore you with the details, but I really, really enjoyed the date. And I was all smiles when I went home, as Aaron was coming by for dinner along with a mutual friend who had cancelled at the last minute. Aaron noticed my mood and grinned at me like that TikTok background. Dang bro, who got you smiling like that? Lol, and I told him everything. I was giddy, but I could see Aaron getting quiet, and his face went from playful to serious. He was so intense that I stopped talking and asked what was wrong, and he shook his head and said nothing. I just said, come on, don't be like that, I know it's nothing. And he snapped at me and said, I said it's nothing. And I just clamped my mouth shut, nodded, and quietly went to check on the food in the kitchen. A couple minutes later, he came into the kitchen and looked really miserable. He apologized for being an arse, that he's not mad at me, that I deserve to be happy, that this is his problem, not mine, and that he just panicked and freaked out because he didn't know Han. He thought it was a buddy of his who has a crush on me unbeknownst to me and felt this horrible fear that he would break my heart. He said he's been working on it, working on himself, but the whole situation with Heather has him effed up five ways to Sunday and it wasn't fair of him to take it out on me. Little moments like that cropped up two or three times. Then he just went stoic. Quiet. Really not himself. Then the incident happened. I work at a local theater in the city that our town surrounds. My schedule is a little bit untraditional, but pretty easy to figure out. Essentially, if a certain event is happening at my job, I am definitely going to be there, unless I am sick or on vacation. This particular event that happened that night was really something I was looking forward to because it had a lot of performances that I wanted to see. 
So, I invited Han as we were newly using the labels of boyfriend and girlfriend, he asked on Valentine's Day. So yeah, it's really new but also really fast. I was really excited to take him to an event at my job, as my boyfriend for the first time. I was with a group of donors when my second in command, and yes, I call her number one, and if you get the reference, we can be friends who I will call Willa F20s came to me and said my cousin was there, and it was an emergency. I know I said that my brother is my family, and that's true. We're each other's only real family, but Aaron and I do have cousins, but we haven't really spoken to them outside of the occasional text here or there, or maybe Facebook comments etc. Most of them cut all contact with me after I came out of the closet, and thus Aaron did the same with them. But we have two grandfathers. One is technically a stepparent, but whatever, and both are older and in ailing health. So I assumed that the emergency was about one of them, and I rushed to my office, where Willa said my cousin was. When I walked into my office, it was not a cousin or any family member for that matter. It was Kim. She had changed her hair, and she had lost a little bit of weight. She did look really different, but it was definitely her. I can't explain the feeling I had when I saw her. I mean effing hell, she had made life a living hell for me and my brother. I was shocked and angry to see her, and I told Willa who she was. Willa had heard a shortened version of everything that had been happening, because I had to take some time off to take care of Aaron and myself, to make sure that we both were getting the help that we needed through therapy and getting medical tests done etc. So I relied a lot on Willow to have the bridge while I was not in office. I asked Kim what she was doing there and why she had come. But before I could say anything, Kim hugged me. Hugged. Me. I was like, what the actual F? Then she glared at Willa and said something like, we need privacy. And Willa refused. So Kim said to get the F out. And Willa is just cool. As it can be said. Francesca is my boss. You are not. I don't take orders from you. She's a badass. Anyway. I had broken from Kim's hug like, what are you doing? Get out. This is my job, etc. And Kim waved it off, saying, and I truly quote, yeah yeah blah blah, we hate each other I get it. And continued to say something like she isn't there because she wants to be. But Heather knew I would likely call the cops if she came herself probably true because I hated her guts definitely true and wanted her no common I am kidding, even though I am not there yet. She said that Heather got kicked out of Haley's and is staying at Kim's and she hasn't been eating or sleeping but she is drinking a lot and spiraling bad. She wants me to ask Aaron to please meet her, so they can talk. Kim said and that Aaron is probably the only person who can save her from this ledge. Guys, I am not proud of this, but something in me just snapped. I laughed. Hysterically. I mean, it was so absurd. This absolute horror show of a woman chewed my brother up and spat him out. Possibly allegedly assaulted him or cheated on him because she somehow got pregnant and broke my brother's heart to the point that he's hardly keeping it together. And she wanted me, the woman she went out of her way to make miserable and push away, to kindly pass along anything from her to him other than, Heather said she's sorry she's a piece of wookie poo, and will never bother us again. Excuse the F out of me. So yeah, I laughed in Kim's face. It might have been cruel, but in the moment, it was honestly the kindest thing I could do, because I wanted to act like a complete fool, cuss her out, cuss Heather out, and tell her just what I thought about her. Again. I am not proud of it. I don't want to be hateful. I don't think it's my nature, and it's not how I was raised. I keep lamenting how my mother would be so ashamed of that ink blot in my heart. But I have no good things to think about or say about either of those twisted crap aisles. I laughed and told Kim to get the F out, or we would call security. I turned to Willa to ask her to make sure Kim left the premises. Here's what all happened after, as told to me, because I don't remember it all fully. There is a brick on my desk that is from the original building that was our theater before the new buildings were built. All employees from that era got one. Kim grabbed it, and I do remember the whack, the sound of it, and nothing else. I don't know guidelines so I won't go into too much detail, but Willa knows how to hold her own and took Kim to the ground, shouting for help. 911 was called. I woke up on a stretcher in an ambulance, and they took me to the hospital. Han was with me. The cops took Kim. It didn't matter if I wanted to press charges in the respect that Kim tried for Willa too. And Willa is pressing all the charges she can. And there are cameras at my job, so proving it wasn't hard. I managed to stay at least partially awake most of the time. I had a concussion, but was going to be fine. They wanted to keep me overnight. But I started to protest, saying I would sign anything they needed to release me to go home. I don't think I mentioned this before, but I have a huge phobia of hospitals. It's due to trauma as a kid. Han had already called Aaron, and when I started protesting being kept at the hospital, I noticed Han was on the phone, and he was quietly relaying, she is saying she won't stay a uh, okay, and the like. 
It takes forever to get discharged for whatever reason. So Aaron arrived at the hospital before the paperwork was even sent. He came in like a man on fire. He didn't yell, but he was scarily firm. You are staying here as long as the doctor says you need to, etc. I admit, I was pissed and in pain, and frankly, a BTCH. I told him he's not our dad, that I am grown, and he can have CK off. We argued. It was bad. We both said stuff we regretted after. Han tried to defuse it. But at one point we both said, damn near simultaneously. Shut up Han. And he did. I swear to God. It was like a bad movie. Aaron and I went from anger to tears, crying as we traded jabs until we just wore ourselves down. He just slumped in the chair by my bed opposite Han. And I stared at that stupid white ceiling, hating everything. Aaron just muttered, I love you, you stubborn arse. And I kind of laughed and muttered something like, I love you too, you jackars. And we just laughed until I fell asleep. So I ended up staying overnight anyway. I was released late the next day. The doctor wanted me to either stay there or go with Han or Aaron. Han offered, but Aaron snapped at him and said I would stay at his, and I was frankly too tired to argue. I hadn't looked at my phone since the incident until I settled in Aaron's guest room. Han said he reached out to Sophia and Letty, a few other friends, and to my boss at work, updating her, but no one else. I had messages galore. It felt like everyone heard. But I saw a message from Heather. It was a video. She was smiling and said, I heard you take a tumble. Get well soon, my love. And she blew a kiss. Han was with me, and I could see he was livid. I begged him not to say anything to Aaron as it would upset him further. And there was no point in that, which was true. But also, given the state he'd been in, I was also worried he would snap and do something supremely stupid. I fell asleep soon after that. I woke up to shouting lots of it and heard Aaron raging. I knew what was happening before I even got to the living room. Han and Aaron had been talking, splitting duties between taking care of me, cooking, alerting everyone etc. And Aaron had taken my phone to get my boss's number and saw Heather's message. He now thinks she planned it all, which sounded insane even for her. But a large bump on my head says anything is possible. He called the police. Kim is still in custody. A trial will need to happen. I am no lawyer, but apparently she has to stay there for a while, thank God. Aaron asked about a restraining order against Kim. The police said it would likely be no trouble to get one, given the circumstances. The issue is Heather. Put simply, we have no proof. The video she sent is no admission of guilt. Kim is saying she is protecting Heather from Aaron. She told the cops that Aaron is violent, cruel, and abusive. She said Aaron forced Heather's abortion, that he would put her down, and that he did vile things my brother would never do in a million years. They said they are investigating these allegations and will be available as soon as they do so. We will hear from detectives. It's a nightmare. Today, I am pretty much recovered and already back at home. But Aaron Han, and all my friends want me to not be home. I got a get well card signed by an H in the mail. It had no postage, leaving us to assume whoever dropped it off came to my home. Because I am a trusting idiot, I left my back door open. Most in my inner circle know I do that regularly I know I know. And when I got home, I noticed the house was off. I still to this day, cannot tell you what it is, and I could be paranoid, but I think someone was in my home, I told my inner circle, and now Han is camped on my couch, and Aaron is nagging me to come back to his, until we can get my locks checked, cameras on the property, and sort out this whole thing, that was sincerely as short as I could make it, and there is still a lot happening now, I don't know what would be worse stay with Aaron, until we get on each other's nerves, and have another blowout fight. Keep poor Han on my couch until his back gives out and Aaron gets a million new gray hairs. All I know is that either way, I won't be sleeping well, if at all. Kim is not a threat currently, but Heather knows where both Aaron and I live. I am unsure if she is crazy or stupid enough to come at either of us directly, or if she even told Kim to do what she did or not. First update. Someone put cameras in my home. Han found at least two. I am saying this with friends until the police sweep my house tomorrow. Update. I am exhausted, so I will try to keep this pithy. I was right about something feeling wrong in the house. Han found two cameras hidden in charger blocks plugged into my kitchen, which is usually the most active room in my home. For reference, I have a pretty open floor plan, and the kitchen can see most of the home outside the living room. Only for a weird wall being there, I never understood why it was built that way. But like I said, cheap fixer upper to buy, so I can't really complain. I was doomed to scroll through Facebook, and catch up on a year's worth of comments and messages, when Han came into my bedroom and told me to pack a bag. He seemed super tense. I tried to ask what was going on, but he was having none of it. 
Han is never bossy or curt like that, so I just did what he asked, and we went outside. I went to my car, and he told me to get in, so I did. He drove me to Aaron's at first. Han told me and Aaron that he was fixing himself a snack when a breaker went out, and he used his cell flashlight to see so he could go to the garage and flip the breaker back. But he noticed a reflection in a charger. He took a closer look and found a camera. It was no hard work to find the second, also in the kitchen on the other side. He knew I had no cameras in the house yet, and immediately went to grab me and get me out of the house. I lost the contents of my stomach right away after hearing that. That's my home. My safe space. I dance in my underwear, I make personal phone calls and FaceTime, and I make out with my boyfriend there. I have no way of knowing how long it was there, or who was watching. I mean I can make a guess to both clearly, but I don't know. The police were called again. They were and are in and out of my home, rummaging through my things. I know it's their job, but it feels like a second violation to have more people in my home. I can't sleep, and I can't cry. I just feel numb and empty. I am staying in the guest room of a friend, I can't say just for security reasons, and all doors and windows are locked. The boys searched Aaron's house up and down for cameras, and an officer is also coming to check. I just want to disappear into a hole forever, but if my suspicions are right, that's what they'd want. Another development is that Aaron found my post. Apparently, it was used on a video on a Facebook or YouTube page or something that he follows, and the details of the original post plus my updates left little room for doubt. He was very dissatisfied with it, and I thought it would be yet another argument when he brought it up, and I had just given up, saying I would take it down. But he said it was fine so long as I used fake names etc. and didn't post who I was with or where I was staying, specifically just in case. Han said an officer let him know I should have a restraining order on Kim by the end of the week. But again, I need proof against Heather. It's frustrating. I know I am safe logically, but I haven't been able to sleep or keep food down. The friends I am staying with have all the security one can ask for and can easily defend me or their home, but my mind is racing. This all got out of control, and all because I ruined my brother's relationship. Han is staying in the bedroom with me because I don't want to be alone. The sweetheart has taken off work for the next few days to be with me. Aaron has told me not to worry, and that he has an idea, but won't say what it is. All I can do right now is wait, cry, and hope I cry enough to exhaust myself enough to sleep. Update. I wanted to share a bit more as a few things have happened. And this has sort of become my diary of sorts, helping me process everything. I want to thank everyone who has been supportive and has sent kind messages, and I apologize for the lack of response. I honestly just get overwhelmed and never know what to say, but I appreciate the kindness. As for those who choose to be unkind, send me abusive and rude messages, or believe this is all fake. I truly hope none of this happens to you, because you may find this only entertaining, but this has been my life for months. I am in twice-weekly therapy now because of it. My health has been impacted in more ways than one, and I haven't been to work in ages. I miss my life, and it's a living nightmare, but thankfully, there may be an end in sight. Now onto the bits I'm sure you're more interested in. I can now sort of share where I've been, and I have to give some background. Aaron didn't want me to say where I was, even with fake names, in case Heather or anyone on her side found my post as he did. But I was staying at my friend Zara's fake name F34 apartment. Zara and I know each other well. We worked at my job until she quit a few years ago to run her own business. And we were two of the few women in positions of leadership and the only two black people in the whole company. She also plays D&D with me and some friends. She also has a software engineering certification, so she talks tech with Aaron. Zara lives alone with a dog, and she took the couch in front of the house so I could sleep in the bedroom. I told her she didn't have to, but she insisted. I hadn't told her everything that had happened until I called after the cameras and explained everything. Zara has always been protective, and Aaron knows that, so he came, and we sat her down and explained everything from the beginning. Zara worked at my job but now owns her own business, which means she works remotely and her time is flexible. I should mention that, to be honest, she and Aaron hit it off when they met, and they became very close and often hung out with friends. I consider her my friend of course, but she's like Sophia in that I share her with Aaron as a friend, and there are times I feel they team up against me. Not maliciously, just that they tend to agree often. Like Wash and Zoe, if you get the reference. Zara listened without interrupting, and then she just stood up, turned on her home security system. She has a ring camera that's always on and cameras on the apartment for when she has actors visiting from out of town and got fresh sheets for the bed. Aaron didn't say anything. He just watched her as if he knew what she was doing. Or maybe they talked before I asked. But I was like, wait, 
What's going on? Zara simply said. You're staying here. I've got a gun, a dog, and a bone to pick with anyone doing this to you. So, you're staying here until you have a safe place to go. I argued, but Han stopped me. Zara and Aaron are chatting about it, like I wasn't there, and I was fuming, but there wasn't much I could do. I was exhausted. I had only been awake for maybe a few hours at that point, and honestly, everything felt heavy on me. Zara was a safe bet anyway. She seems harmless because she is one of the nicest and most accommodating people I know. She's my height and smaller than me. I wear maybe a medium. She's still wearing smalls. That said, a quick story. Once at a bar, a man who was a deaf gym rat guy would not release her arm when he was hitting on her. She said, If you don't let me go, I have to hurt you. Please let me go. I don't want to hurt you. And the guy laughed and yanked her arm, and she somehow moved him in front of her and slammed his head into the bar so hard that he stumbled down, and she pulled the group of girls we were with to the bouncer. Zara's birth mother was a Marine. Her other mother was in the Air Force. She's a military brat and has been taught to defend herself since she was young. It's funny because she honestly has the warmest personality in any room, but she is like the one punch man of our friends. I was a wreck, so Han stayed too. Aaron only chatted with Zara a while before leaving, and I stayed at Zara's for a few days. It was actually really nice. She would make breakfast every morning and have me walk with her when she walked her dog in the morning midday and before dinner. She would cook most meals, and for dinner, we would drink wine or beer and laugh like we used to. She would play video games with Han. She has every console I can think of, and Han was in heaven. I forgot how much I love Zara, and how much she reminds me of my mom. She's lively, sweet, and laughs big like an auntie does. She's a great listener, and even though she doesn't have children, she is seriously one of the most maternal people I know, always willing to do anything for her friends. We're not far apart in age, but she feels like a big sister. Anyway, during that time I went to my therapy appointments virtually and had a physical checkup in person as I was still losing weight. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but it's been an issue for about a month. Zara said it wouldn't be an issue for long and laughed. She would play her guitar at night, and I got used to falling asleep to it. And then the other night she was playing but quieter, and I heard her speaking to someone. Han was in the sleeping bag in the room beside the bed, and Zara lives alone, so I went out. It was the cops. Zara saw me. And the first thing she told me was that, it's alright, Aaron is okay. Here is what I didn't know. Aaron had told me he had an idea, but didn't say what it was. Apparently, Heather and Aaron seemed to have a great relationship with one issue. Zara. Heather hated Zara and tried to rattle her. But Zara worked as an educator for years, recognized the behavior, and even told Aaron about it. At the time, Aaron waved it off, asking Zara to please try to get along with Heather as a favor to him. He just thought, the girls sometimes squabble, until everything happened. Zara Long knew Heather felt threatened by how close she was to Aaron. So she and Aaron went on social media that night and faked a relationship. They uploaded photos, swapped posts, etc. I had no idea they were doing this. At first, they thought it wasn't working. Heather never contacted either of them, and I have her blocked. So Aaron posted something about making dinner for his love and tagged Zara, and Heather showed up at his house. I don't know all that happened but she's on his camera, trying to punch him and push him into his house. She broke the window next to his front door and threw the potted plants at him. Aaron went inside and called the police, but Heather had left. The cops were at Zara's to talk to both her and me about the ongoing issues with Heather. We shared the same information. Zara added about Heather being jealous of her friendship with Aaron new to me at the time, and they left. When Zara shut the door, she looked at me with a grand smile and said nothing. She just sat on the couch with her glass of wine. I was like, what just happened? And Zara said, come and sit with me, have some wine. Heather had left Aaron's house before the cops came, and police were looking for her. Aaron was pressing charges. He had scratches on him and a bruise where she threw a potted plant at him and hit him in the shoulder. I called him, and he says he is fine. He sounded almost happy. I know he was going for assault and for the damage done to his property. He is going for a weapon charge as well because she threw things at him and that may be considered a blunt instrument. I don't know the details. I don't really wish to know them either. I just want to know when she will be arrested. I heard that the same night, she went to her sister's house Haley, where she had been living, but Aaron had texted her. Haley had had enough, and was putting Heather's stuff out front. It wasn't much, so it didn't take long, but Heather pitched a fit. Since the car Heather is using is Haley's, she was told she could not use it anymore. Haley asked for her keys back, 
and Heather slapped her. Hallie's husband witnessed this and took the car. So she has now added another assault and theft to the charges, as Haley is pressing charges too, with ring doorbell camera footage to back her up. As for me, they cleared my home, and apparently I can trace the cameras back somehow. Aaron explained it to me, but to be honest, all I heard was that there was a chance they could find someone to put the cameras in. I was hesitant to go home, but Zara offered to let me stay until Heather is arrested since Heather never went to her home and doesn't know where she lives, and then Zara will stay with me since she mostly works remotely for her business to help me get the house back in order. And she has a Rottweiler who loves me, named Zena. She's a sweet dog, but looks ferocious from afar. Zara and Aaron want me to stay with her for now because she has booked a place to retreat to for some of spring break. While she rents her apartment room to travelers the city she lives in is intensely popular during holidays. And now I will be staying with Zara and Zena. I have been able to sleep through the night. So Han is going to my house to get a head start on changing the locks etc. He is also installing home security. Aaron got me. So I am writing this from a lovely rented vacation home with a pool in the back and a loving dog on my lap. Zara is working inside, and there is Motown music playing loudly through all the windows. She doesn't think I know, but she is planning a dinner Friday with my friends to cheer me up. I overheard her on the phone when she thought I was asleep. Everyone is sure Heather will be found by the weekend. Aaron thinks Kim will flip on Heather pretty quickly, because in the recording of her coming after him, he said something like, Oh, so you came yourself this time? Since Kim can't fight for you. And Heather said something to the effect that she only told Kim to go after me because Kim is dumb enough to do it, but not smart enough to prove Heather asked her to. I don't know the exact quote, but Aaron is damn near giddy he has the recording, and he seems sure Kim, once she sees it, will sing like a bird. Also, since Heather made threats against me, Aaron, Han, Zara, Sophia and Letty in her tirades online, and on the video evidence, we likely have enough for restraining orders. It isn't perfect. But it's a start. Zara's birthday is later this month, and she has invited me and our friends to celebrate with her. I know she is trying to take my mind off Heather and this crap show, but I don't mind. She's a good friend. I still have nightmares and panic attacks, but it's easy to talk to Zara when they happen. She is certified to handle these things within reason through her former job, and so she has been wonderful to me. I stopped worrying that I was being too dramatic, too much, or simply asking too much of her. She's waved off those concerns with a laugh and a hug. She says she loves having the company and enjoys our talks. I guess I will update when Heather is arrested. But I am excited for the first time in a while. It's quiet here, and Zena is great company as I sit and enjoy the perfect weather. Side note. Zara read this before I posted laughed and got mad that I did not name her Zelda. She said I wasted an opportunity there. Update. I was just diagnosed and am still reeling. How do I even begin? I feel a little silly asking, as I've known and do know people who struggle with depression, and never figured I would be diagnosed with it myself. I can honestly blame a lot of it on things happening in my life, but not on not having people to talk to. I went to the doctor to get checked up on an injury I sustained not long ago. I am all clear by the way. But my boyfriend and brother left the room, and my doctor lingered, and she asked me a bunch of other questions. I've had this doctor for a while now, and I usually am pretty open with her but I have definitely had a rough four or five months, and she's been my doctor for most of it. After our talk, she said that it sounds like I am depressed, and she would like to start me on medication. I am already in therapy twice a week for several weeks, going forward due to ongoing issues at the behest of my therapist and close friends and family. Therapy has been great, and I actually started feeling more like myself for the first time in a long time. But now depression. It just feels hurtful somehow. Like I took two steps forward and four steps back. Am I overthinking this? Even now I am helping plan a surprise birthday party for a dear friend and helping plan the wedding of two of my best friends and things have been looking up. I feel like I have no excuse to feel this way and I haven't mentioned it to my boyfriend, friends or family. How do I even begin to tackle this? I hate taking medication on my best days. I know it's childish, but any advice would be helpful. Update. Orange is the new Seth. This will be a short update. Sorry if the title feels misleading, but someone got on me about not titling, so here it is. Heather is not in custody to be clear, but there is a warrant out for her arrest. Not sure for what, but Aaron said that she committed a few crimes recently, and if found around these parts, she will be in cuffs so fast her head will spin. As far as we know, she still has Haley's car illegally as well. Last night, she texted me from a random number, I don't know. And here is the text I changed my name to the fake name, 
and certain details for privacy. Francesca, I don't know what I ever did to make you hate so much to take my complete and utter life from me. But then again, I don't think I ever knew you. I spent countless hours trying to pinpoint when we went from friends to enemies. But the only conclusion I can draw is that we were never friends to begin with. Aaron was, and is the love of my life. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. But his betrayal is damn near unforgivable. I guess you win. He chose you over me and his child. Are you happy I killed my own child, your niece or nephew, because your brother was afraid of how you would react? How does it feel to be responsible for the snuffing out of an innocent life? I have named our angel, and their name is whispered in my prayers. You don't have to tell everyone you're afraid of me. I have left our town and won't be returning. You took everything from me, and I have nothing left. I would hate you, but I can't. I feel sorry for you. You never knew true love, so you clung to your brother for affection. If you feel sorry, or are not able to stand on your own, to call your own shots, or to be yourself without the self-loathing that brought you to these actions, I pray you and Aaron are not as decent with one another as I am told. Framing me for the cameras was a nice touch. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I have never had any interest in your lonely life in that broken-down home by yourself. Your boyfriend doesn't love you. I can tell. Sadly, you can't. The second you put it out, he will throw you away like a toy. When he does, remember me. How you treated me. You could have had a sister who loved you, but you chose this. You chose to make me do all of this. Now you chose to abandon me to nights without meals, a roof, or a shower. You've chosen to force me into selling all I own for gas. You forced me to sleep in my car in unsafe places. And possibly, if anything happens, you've chosen a horrible end for me at the hands of strangers. Are you happy? I won't reach out again. It hurts too much to even think of how you rejected me so completely and ruined my life. I never expected you to be this jealous and vindictive, but I guess I never knew you. May God bless you, and may his love bring you to repentance. May we meet in heaven someday. Heather. Of course, I took screenshots and told the police. I haven't told anyone else. I have been keeping busy with preparing for Zara's birthday party, and I am literally just sitting at the restaurant all dressed up, waiting for everyone else to arrive. Aaron is picking Zara up and bringing her here under the guise of a thank you dinner, just the two of them, where they can also discuss what to do about the situation. I'm tired. Not the physical kind. I've never felt more relaxed physically, but my brain is tired. Sleep does nothing for me. I wake up feeling overwhelmed and wanting to sleep more. I go to bed hoping I will fall asleep soon, but I don't dream. When I dream, it's usually a nightmare, and I feel awful for Heather. I can't imagine being alone truly alone on the road, living in my car, afraid for my safety every night. She feels betrayed. I know she's talking about most, if not all, of the text, but I still feel badly for her. I know, call me stupid or whatever. I have and will block super mean commenters and messages for my own mental health. Quick note. Whether you agree with me or believe me or not, calling me pathetic and telling me to do awful things to myself says far more about you than me. So here I am. I am hoping to put on my face, hand Zara her birthday sash and crown, have the best damn night ever, and forget this mess. I won't mention this to any of them at least not tonight. Tonight is for birthdays and Joy and Sophia and Letty's engagement, and Aaron has a new job. And Han and I are good. I shouldn't be feeling this way. I should be happy. So I will try to be. Update. Revenge of the Sith. For the record, Zara suggested the title. Well I can't say I expected to update so soon and not like this. But buckle up because it's not going to be a vacation on Tatooine. I won't say that I will try to keep this brief. It's never brief. I am wordy and nerdy, and I won't change that right now. To be honest, as I've mentioned, this is more my diary or journal and a coping mechanism, so I will stick to my writing style, but I will try to stay on task to avoid confusion. A very quick aside to answer a question I got in the comments and messages, so sorry I didn't mention before, but Zara's birthday party was great. My brother had invited her under the guise of taking her dinner to thank her for all her help and for being a solid friend to us. He told her it was a nice place so she could dress up if she wanted. She did, and she looked stunning in a lovely red dress, heels, and make up the whole nine. We all shouted surprise, and she froze in shock and burst into tears. We didn't know this, but her life had been lonely, and the little family she had basically disowned her, and she felt alone and lovable, which is incredible because she is one of the most lovable individuals I have ever known. Anyway, we drank and sang happy birthday, and she ate seafood her favorite to her heart's content. We all pitched in to cover her bill and we were together, then hit a bar after. 
when I say I paid for the tequila the next day. All that to say, I will try to pick up where I left off. After Heather's text, I felt awful. I barely had energy for anything, and I guess that's the depression kicking my buttocks. I have an appointment tomorrow because Zara insisted. She said she isn't trying to judge me and won't go to Aaron about it yet. But she is concerned about me and wants me to be healthy and have all the tools needed to feel myself again. I know it's not fair to her, but I was annoyed but relented. So, there's that. I really appreciate all the reassurances y'all gave me. And you were right. I am easily gaslit, and I shouldn't let Heather get to me. Especially knowing what I know now. Heather was not out of town. She was at Kim's sister's, who turned her in after they fell out, apparently. But Heather had left before the police arrived. I don't know where she is now, but knowing she could very well be in town just unnerves me. I know it may sound awful, but I don't feel safe. It's stressful, and I am clinging to whoever is with me like glue. I take Zara's dog with me everywhere, and I can't stand to be alone. In hindsight, that and my constant nightmares probably prompted Zara to ask me to seek help with my depression. Han is with us, and we have returned to my home. Zara is staying with me for a while. This morning, I got a call from my boss, the director of the overall department, whom I will call Nathan. He basically said I have to come back to work. I mentioned I was applying for FMLA, and he actually laughed and said, FMLA is not for family drama, but for emergencies. He says if I don't start returning to work by April, he will be forced to reassess my position. I asked if number one, my second in command, was not handling things well, and he said, she is. In fact, she can run the programs without you, it seems, which may be a reason I need to reassess if you are needed. You can imagine with these budget cuts why I might be more inclined to reward her hard work which felt like a veiled way of saying he can and will easily fire me, and they will only be positively affected. I have been a wreck all day about it, especially since Heather knows where I work, as she once worked there too. Nathan is fully aware of the situation, as the police have had to speak to him about Heather since he is director. I don't want to go back to campus until I know it's safe, but I can't lose my job. Zara has offered to bring her laptop to the coffee shop nearby, but I can't ask her to do that after she's done so much for me already. When I refused, I did my best to make it seem like I was fine, that it wasn't real trouble, and that I was just annoyed by Nathan being a nerf hurting Jabba, because she knows he's always been a jerk to me anyway. She took me out shopping, and we got pepper spray and a taser. She wanted to buy me a gun, and I live in a place where guns are prevalent, but I never liked the things, and while I do know how to fire one, I don't think I want one. Han has insisted on being my ride to and from work, as he does have one and he doesn't like the fact that security is easy to get past at my job. He's also actively sending me job listings. He thinks I should apply to that even pay better, because he doesn't want me at that job anymore. My job is niche, and all the jobs he sent are out of my reach, so I let him know that's not feasible, and we actually had a weird sort of argument, which didn't help things for either of us. Zara diffused it by changing the subject to what we wanted to eat for dinner, and we seemed to have moved on but ate in silence. I went to my room to cry and fell asleep. As I am writing this now though, he has been sulking in the living room, and I have been trying to figure out how best to apologize. But I want to do it with a clear head, so I will probably wait until morning. It's super late at night, and he will probably go to sleep soon. This all just feels like an endless loop of stress and frustration. I am thankful for the community here, so I can vent, as I feel like I am wearing on the others. And even Aaron has been scarce lately, though he said it was just juggling his job the court cases, the wedding planning for our friends, and his own therapy. I am sitting in my room in my home, with my bestie down the hall in the guest room and my boyfriend on my couch. I mean, I am surrounded by loved ones, but I feel more alone than ever. But as I am sure many of you will be delighted to hear, I still have Zara's sweet doggo with me, who cuddles when I cry and seems to really like being around me. Dog therapy is doing wonders. I know this isn't much of an update. I think I just needed to vent. Update. Natural one. I will always title, because we played last night, and it's on the brain. And yes, I will always title from now on. This is a stupid update. Yes, it will be long not sorry, and also to anyone concerned, I share too much given the circumstances. I have already said I use fake names and change details for privacy. Also, I apologized to Han for his favorite breakfast, the next day after my last post. He said he was sorry too, and that he was tense about the situation as a whole. I told him I applied to some of the jobs he suggested, and asked if he could take a look at my resume, and he happily said yes. I told him I appreciated it, and really appreciated all he had been doing for me. Our relationship is fairly new, 
and not everyone would step up the way he has. I told him how much it means to me that he is willing to do all he does, even or especially since he doesn't have to buy any stretch of the imagination. He waved it off a bit, saying something like, You know me, I am a ride or die, and laughed. But I held his gaze and told him I meant it. And he smiled and said he was happy to hear it. Thankfully, we are all good now. But I did send him home to rest, which maybe was my mistake. But he needed to relax and sleep in a bed, not my couch, and really take time for himself. He hesitated, but I knew he knew I was right. So he went to spend the weekend at home. Now onto this absolutely crap slide of a week. Zara's actual birthday passed, and she was sad because, out of her family, only her mom texted her just a text, that's it. Happy birthday, and she was low. I called Aaron and suggested we do something, and he suggested a nerdathon, which is something he and I coined. It's basically a weekend where we do nerdy crap unashamedly, as if it were our jobs. In this instance, since it was Operation Cheer Up Zara, it was stuff she liked. We started with watching Dune 2 Man. That movie is long, lol with her. Aaron just showed up at the house, and Zara got the door and just looked at him, and he grinned and said, Get in loser, we're going nerding, and Zara was like, What? But I already had her coat, so we went. We took her to dinner at this place that is like a Ren Fair with three course meals think of it like that famous place, medieval times in Baltimore, but owned by absolute geeks we all dressed up before. Aaron was an ogre, I was an elf, and Zara was a cleric. We then stayed for a one-off D&D session. Zara, and I drank since Aaron was driving mistake number two. We get back to his place to watch Serenity the Firefly movie. And there's a man at the door. Aaron told us to stay in the car. I told him the guy looked familiar, but I couldn't place him. And Aaron chuckled at that because he knew who it was and went to talk with him. Zara and I watched as they shook hands, but I couldn't hear what was said. Aaron looked really mad and waved us in. We all got into the house, and the guy was Haley and Heather's father. I will call him Odie, because he looks like Anthony Hopkins a bit. And he played Odin in the Marvel movies, shut up, my post, my fake names lol. But I won't give him the respect of being the father of Thor. So Odie it is. Odie saw me, and said it was good to see me again. We met once at Heather's birthday party, and then a few other wedding things. But I didn't interact with him much. And he was glad I was there because he wanted to talk with both of us. He turned to Zara and said, Do you mind? In a rude tone. And Zara just looked at him as if she were bored and looked to us, and Aaron said that she stays. Odie didn't like it, and was not shy about showing it. He asked us to drop our charges against Heather. I snorted without realizing it, and when he looked at me, I said there was no way. My head still hurts thinking about all she did. I guess he took that to be about Kim's attack it wasn't, and he said it was Kim's choice to do that, and there is zero evidence to suggest Hathaher asked her to. Aaron just said, Odie, why are you here? This could be a phone call. Odie said that Heather has been diagnosed with BP, and also that there are new medical concerns, and they think she has a medical condition, but with her being wanted, she can't get the treatment and therapy she needs even in her home state, where he and his wife are. He said if we drop our charges against her, he will take Heather back home, where she will not bother us ever again, and she can get all the treatment she needs. Aaron was quiet, and then asked, How do you know? and then asked how she even got diagnosed why the medical concern. And then Zara said, He's got her, and is hiding her, duh. Odie said it would be illegal for him to do that and asked, Well, will you drop the charges? She is sick and needs help, and you know how the justice system works. She won't have a chance to get better, he pleaded with Aaron, one man to another, saying that's his daughter and Aaron has to still have some love for her, asserting he can't be heartless. I had it at that. I think it was the frustration and tiredness, but I just snapped. I told him we wouldn't tolerate guilt trips and manipulation. Heather went too far. Her health is not more important to my or my brother's physical safety or that of our friends. Absolutely not. Even so, we cannot drop all charges, only some, as the police made it clear some of this is not in our hands. I made a point to say that even if it were, I wouldn't drop Jaxt. She hurt my brother. She intended harm, we said. You were her friend. You turn on your friends like that? Or something like that. And I told him to get out. He said, This isn't your house. So Aaron said, Oh, it's mine. And what Francesca meant to say is get the FCK out. That was when Odie went from pleading to cold. It was so fast, it was scary. He said, You don't want me as an enemy, young man. Zara asked him what that meant. And if he was threatening us. And he shrugged and left. Aaron then tells me he was almost happy to not hear from any of Heather's flying money or her in general. And now he needs a drink and a movie to forget about this. 
I know it was bad timing, but Zara looked at me kind of well. And I told him about the text message. He kept saying, what? Or, hold on, what do you mean? As I explained, and then got so red I thought he would pop. I forwarded the text to his phone, and he checked his phone and just stood there. He then said something like, screw the movie, and that he needed a drink. He asked me when this all happened, and I told him, and that's when he got mad. And you're telling me this now. Zara tried to calm him, but then he realized she knew too, and he hasn't said much to either of us since. I've contacted him in person and via text, and all I get is an okay. All I have heard from him since is that Heather might have been found, and that he is going in today to learn more. So I guess I will update then. Small edit update. This is too small a thing to create an entire post, but too big to not tack on here. Two things, actually. One is that I've decided to apologize to Aaron in person today after therapy. I made a promise to him and broke it. And it really, really hurt him. He is angry, but doesn't want to lash out. So he's just shut down entirely. Hopefully my therapist can help me find strategies to not make my apology about me and focus more on his feelings and how I've deeply hurt him. I will also come clean about my diagnosis, the anxiety attacks, and everything. No more pretending I am okay. I can't hide from my problems anymore. Plus, this has hit Zara hard. She's been crying. She hasn't been eating a lot. But the big tell is her dog whining around her, nudging her. Dogs know things, even if we try to hide them. Zara's been all smiles when she knows I am around, but I know they're fake. I just do. So I have to fix things with Aaron and own up to my bad choices. It's going to stink, but I love Aaron, Zara and Han, Sophia and Letty, and the friends who rally around me and help me and check in on me. They deserve to receive the same transparency and compassion they show. Wish me luck. The second thing is that Odie has called my phone three times. He left two messages. One just asked me to call him back. The second was him saying nothing new. I am Heather's friend, and it's cruel to not give her a fighting chance to fight BP. He then went on to text me links about BP, and how, when exacerbated, it can get quite nasty. To not make the same mistake twice, I immediately told Aaron and sent him the recordings and screenshots. He only texted back to ignore him, don't block him, and that we will have to go to the police about it, as it is harassment. His house cam got the whole conversation with Odie recorded, so he will use that as well. If you have advice on how to apologize please share. I admit I am not good at them. I tend to explain or excuse the offense too much, to the point that the apology stops being an apology. I'm not proud of that and want to try to change it. Update. She had it common. Chicago reference in the title. This time for those wondering. When I started updating, I never expected to update within 24 hours of another update. But in the wise words of my favorite meme, it can be like that sometimes. So I went to Aaron and apologized. I told him he had every right to be angry at me, and I was sorry for going back on a promise and keeping things from him. I told him that I know I've said it before, but it won't happen again, and I mean it. I came clean about the diagnosis and everything, and told him what my therapist said to me, which was that I apparently have an avoidant personality and have to take active steps to unlearn the survival tactics I've used in the past. I am actively working on it in therapy and will be taking medication just until all this crap is done. I said I don't have the expectation of his forgiveness because I know I hurt him, but I was very sorry. He hugged me and said he had forgiven me before I came by and just wanted me to be okay. Then he tells me that he can't be mad at me for doing what he was doing. Heather had texted him too. He didn't bring it up to me for the same reasons, I didn't bring my text up to him. He said we were on the phone, and I said something about being fine and having fun with Zara. And I sounded so happy that he didn't want to say anything to damage the calm and happiness in my voice. So I guess my pretending everything is fine backfired on both of us. I won't pretend to you that I wasn't upset. But the fact is, we are similar in too many ways. We both also have a lot of unlearning to do. We created a special chat with just him and me on it on an app for privacy. I won't name it. And we are calling it the Captain's Log. It's where we will share anything and everything we cannot say in person or are struggling to share. Heather was also arrested last night. She was found at the hospital. I don't know why she was there but what I've been told is she went in under her mother's name. But the information didn't match up. So they called BS and ended up calling the cops. Because she is being charged with more than one count of violence, she is being held until she is presented to a judge to discuss whether she will be held until trial. Or at least, that is what I understand from what I've been told. Legal stuff isn't even in the realm of stuff I understand. But Aaron seemed to get it, because of course I just nodded until he translated. The legal stuff was like Shiryuuk 
and Eren is like every character in Star Wars. The cameras planted in my home are not a charge they are leveling against her. I can't say more about it on Reddit yet. We were told by the police who came to the house, and I can't explain it any other way. But it's like holding a breath, forgetting for days, and then finally breathing again. I cried. Aaron cried. We were just so relieved. We took a moment to compose ourselves and went to my place to tell Zara and Han, and everyone cried all over again. Aaron asked to speak to Zara alone, and Han and I made plans as they chatted to grab snacks or drinks to celebrate. We suggested it to them, but they were too exhausted and suggested we do it tomorrow so today. I will note that Zara and Aaron both seemed less sad after they talked. I don't know what was said, but I think they are good now. When I asked Zara, she smiled and said everything was starting to right itself again. I slept like a log last night and woke to my boyfriend making breakfast all cheery before eating with me and heading to work. I am just lounging around in my pajamas because, to update the Nat situation, I went to HR with a lot of email and text receipts from Nat. I had emailed him with a summary of what he said on the phone, and he replied, which I also sent along with my hospital records from the attack. My FMLA is approved, and I am looking for another job. Odie has not bothered us yet, but I suspect he knows better, as Aaron made it clear to the police that he has been harassing us. He pulled a, it's self-defense if I've told him to leave us alone, and he comes back on one of our properties, right? Mentioning he has legal possession of weapons to defend himself. The police were pretty adamant we let them handle it, but Aaron did get that it would be self-defense if we were afraid of bodily harm if Odie returned to our properties, as he is trespassing on Aaron's by legal standards and we are working with a lawyer to draft papers for me. We are inviting a couple other friends to have dinner tonight to celebrate everything. And for the first time in a while, I feel peaceful just sitting at home. I have a cup of tea and a sweet doggo at my feet. In a perfect world, I would have guaranteed not to be bothered by the Sith ever again. But in the real world, trials and no contact orders take time. So I will take my small pocket of peace, while I have it, nap on the couch, play some Baldur's Gate 3, then get dressed and celebrate with my family. Aaron and Han have both taken off tomorrow, so it will be a long weekend due to it also being Easter Happy Easter to all who celebrate. My chosen family, and I don't really celebrate the holiday, but we will still have a family-style dinner. Aaron insisted on it. Willa number one will also be invited because I will be actively advocating for her to have my position once I find a new job and resign. Last, but not least, Kim is out on bail until her trial. Don't ask me how that happened. All charges are still stacked against her but she is agreeing to stay away from me and my family by court order and restraining order, or she goes back. I lock all my doors and have a camera system similar to Aaron's at my place, as well as dash cams on my car. Plus, a Rottweiler with a bark that could scare a poltergeist. I still train with Zara as well. I refuse to be made to feel unsafe in my home ever again. While there are still steps to take, I am happy to take a long weekend with my now large family. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and holiday. I will update if anything happens. Update. My brother. And I aren't sure about second chances or closure. But this might be our only chance. And I don't know what to do. I f 30s am writing this post on my phone. Sitting on my bed. After I have cried all the tears I had in me. I am using fake names. But keeping the names consistent with my other posts. The Wookie Poo has hit the fan recently. My grandfather is dead. And of course I am sad. But I haven't seen him in years after he smacked me in the face and screamed that I was dead to him, demonic, and to never come back after I came out as bestial and tried to introduce my first girlfriend. He went to NC with me, but tried to keep in contact with my brother M30's Aaron. Aaron cut off contact with him in solidarity with me. My grandfather tried to reach out to him a few times, but Aaron would only tell him that if I am not related to grandfather, then neither am he. We got word of my grandfather's death from his wife. Zoe F. 60 Sish who found Aaron's information via an old friend of ours that Aaron is still in touch with. My chosen family had Easter at my house. It was the first time that this family that we have kind of hodgepodge together had a holiday just with us. It was a really good day, and I have so many beautiful memories from it that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Everything was perfect until everyone got a little bit too wine drunk, and some had Ubered home or had rides with their sober companions. It was just my brother, my boyfriend, and my best friend and they all decided to stay over and sober up before heading home in the morning. Aaron woke me up early Monday, and he had been crying. He told me grandfather passed away last week. I was shocked and sad and cried as well. He wasn't a good man or parent to us, but my mother is dead, and my father walked out when I was small. I always hoped one day grandfather would call me, 
and we could somehow have some closure. I don't think reconciliation is the word. Aaron let me have a cry and waited until I had calmed down, and we talked in the kitchen over tea. He then mentioned Zoe told him she has also been in touch with our father. Anakin, yes, I am big on sci-fi. So sue me because grandfather left things for all of us even me. And she warned us that Anakin would want to discuss it all with us. There is legal mumbo-jumbo. But the short answer is that my parents never officially divorced. My understanding is that when Anakin left, he was nowhere to be found to have papers served. And mom focused all she could on her health, on us, and on work. When mom passed away, her will was pretty ironclad, and Anakin never showed up anyway. I don't know if I remember this myself, or if I had been told this so many times that it simply feels like a memory. But the last time Aaron and I saw Anakin was the night he left, and I begged him not to go. I don't answer calls from numbers I don't know, and with the holiday, I hadn't checked messages. Aaron and I both checked our phones, and I indeed had messages, too. One started with a voice I kind of recognized saying, Wow, crazy. You sound so grown up. That's crazy, man. It's pop. I know it's been a while. We have a lot to catch up on. Call me back. Love you, princess. And he left his number and email, and said he also found me on Facebook, and to check my messages. And the second voicemail said he found my other social media, and how beautiful I am and look like mom, and that he was coming to town to see me. According to his messages, he flew in right before Easter, and was basically in town until next week. I got so angry. Mom called me princess. It felt wrong coming from the guy who was never there in any clear memory I ever had. He wasn't there when mom got really sick, any of the times she was in the hospital, or when she passed away. Not for her, not for us. Where was he when we struggled to figure out adulthood far younger than planned? When we got our first jobs, went to college, navigated our first heartbreaks, and had my health scare, any of it. But now he's pop, and I'm princess, I am in my effing thirties. Aaron will be in his forties in a few years, like, what the hell is he so casual about? Aaron was just staring at me and asking how I wanted to handle this. I shrugged and asked him the same. He said, Well, he called you, not me. And it was the first time I talked about this that I realized how hurt he was. It made my blood boil. I told him we needed to make a choice together. And he said he wants to hear what the guy has to say, and that it may provide closure for us. I won't lie. I hate the idea. But we didn't get closure with my grandfather, and it stings. F me. But I have regrets, so it may be worth it to hear Anakin out. So I said okay and texted Anakin we'd meet Tuesday. Well, it's Tuesday. I have been dragging my feet to even get out of bed. I can't stop crying. I don't want to move. I know I am far too emotional about it, so I could use advice. This timing is terrible. Aaron and I are going through enough. I won't outline it all here as it's in other posts, but we are still reeling from the actions of Aaron's ex fiance and I doubt either of us has the capacity for Anakin too. How do I even go about this? How do I just chat with a guy who walked out on us? On mom? How am I supposed to even keep my composure? Update. Let the good times roll. Hi everyone. I won't get into the issues of my father here. I know some of you found that post, and I have already received truly kind messages. This post will have as many good vibes as I can muster. I admit, I am trying not to think of my therapy session today, or the crap show I expect this evening to be. So this is also a nice distraction. Here it goes. I have good medical news I can finally share. After my first post, I had relapsed into my eating disorder, and it was tough. I felt ashamed and didn't tell anyone until Aaron, and I made a promise of having no secrets, so I told him. He's been really supportive, and I have gained my lost weight back, and am finally at 128 pounds. Still not enough given my height, but I am past the line of healthy weight. I hope to stay around 135-140, which my doctor says is the goal she has for me. I am finally feeling slightly more like myself, and am feeling more confident in my skin again. I know it will take work to maintain, but I don't feel so alone anymore, and I think I will be okay. Easter was lovely. This whole chosen family thing is the best. Sophia struggles with her family due to being gay, and Letty's works through holidays as they are all in law and apparently very busy, so they both came and we chatted about their upcoming wedding. In saying that the time is coming rapidly upon us, Aaron was able to get a refund from the bridal dress store via credit, and said Sophia can have it as he will have no use of it. She cried her eyes out as her family refused to help her, so they were going to settle on a cheaper dress for her. But it turns out she can get the one she's really been eyeing. Han and Aaron bonded a lot, and that was nice to witness. Then there was Zara, who took it upon herself to be the kitchen master. She cooked and baked like a tornado, 
and we had a lovely Cajunafro Latin style meal. Also, I am happy to confirm Aaron and Zara are indeed all good now. He spent a lot of time in the kitchen helping her, and they would chat and laugh. It was awesome to see my big brother, our big and bad protector, struggling to keep up with silly tasks like whisking or cooking rice in a pot and not a rice maker. I have an interview for a similar job to the one I have now, but it pays better and is mostly remote, but for one season a year and occasional meetings. I am excited for it, as it's a much bigger organization and the benefits look amazing. Lastly, Heather and Odie. They are barred from speaking to us or reaching out to us. No contact orders are in place. Kim will be testifying against Heather, and Heather is using the defense that she was unwell and that her mental illness caused her actions. I cannot belittle the issues around BP. It's not my struggle, so I can't speak to it. But she caused a lot of harm. So I struggle to have too much sympathy. But for what it's worth, so long as she stays away from me and my family, and is probably kept to the orders, I hope she gets the utmost care. Aaron, on the other hand. Let's say he has his own opinions on the matter. I almost forgot to mention that I have decided to get a dog. Zara volunteers with the shelter she got hers from. And we looked at a few this weekend. And I am in love with two but I will only adopt one for now. I applied for the older one, as older dogs have a harder time getting adopted. She's a snuggle bug, and I have a lot of love to share. I am so grateful for the encouraging words and ongoing support. This community feels like an extension of my family. I will update on the father situation when I can. But otherwise, I hope every single one of you had a great weekend, and is having a great week. I wanted to share this sunshine with you all, as I share more of my storms with you than anything. Thanks for helping me keep sane, okay? I am off to therapy lol. This should be interesting. Update. I don't know where to even begin, so I guess it will have to be at therapy. My therapist gave me some advice and tools before meeting my father with Aaron. I am also thankful for the advice given here, and I took a lot of it on board. Aaron and I arrived early. I think he was eager to get this started, but I couldn't tell if it was so it could be over faster or what. I really really didn't want to be there. I told my brother as much, and he said we could just leave if I wanted, but I chose to stay. Honestly, we made it this far. We prepared and processed so much so quickly for this. Let's do the damn thing, you know. Aaron and I are chatting. It's a restaurant bar place, and it's dog friendly, so Zara gave us permission to bring her sweet dog on along and winked at us. And if she bites him, oh well, and laughed. God, she's a real one. My father arrived, and he greeted me cheerily. To be honest, I didn't recognize him. I just saw an older black man approaching straight towards us, calling me princess. He reached for a hug, and I put my hands up to stop him, and said that my name is Francesca. He paused but smiled still. He shook Aaron's hand and introduced himself. Hi, I am Anakin, Francesca's papa. Are you her boyfriend, or husband? Aaron's face paled entirely. Then he turned red. He honestly looked like he was going to cry, and then he steadied himself and said, It's me, Aaron. I guess it's been a while indeed. This threw Anakin off. He looked at Arlen for a long moment, but he seemed much less warm and said, Oh, I didn't know you were coming. Aaron said, Because I wasn't invited. Anakin turned to me and said, I guess you were. I took the time to ask why Aaron wasn't invited, and only I and Anakin said he wanted to talk to me privately. I asked why not privately with Aaron as well, and he dodged. Sloppily. We sat, and he tried to start with, How is life? What do you do? But I warned about this. I just asked why he was here and what he wanted. After all, I hadn't seen him since I was too small to tie my own shoes. What brought him in now? Just my grandfather's death. He tries to dodge small talk, and I notice something odd. He was only really asking about me and my life, not Aaron. I was blunt and asked why. You haven't asked once about Aaron, why? But Aaron said he knew. Because he was the adopted one, and I was Anakin's miracle baby. I sat back and just asked, Is that true? Anakin said that he wanted to talk to his child first, and then he would have asked about Aaron. That mom and he were blessed with a real child of their own, and that I was his little girl. He tried to say that it doesn't mean he doesn't care about Aaron. Of course he does. But there is something special about a father and a daughter and their bond. I got furious, but held my calm and said, Bond? What bond do you think I have with you? I don't even know you. Mom raised us and I will call my mom Salini for this. My father looked at me dead in the eye and said, Well, you were my favorite. Aaron was Salini's, and he laughed as if it were a joke, and I stood up. Mom loved us both. You were gone. If we aren't equal to you, you can leave. 
and I went to sit at the bar. Aaron and I talked for about 30 minutes, and I gave Aaron some space after catching his eye. He was by my side by the time I finished my whiskey and said we could go, but I wanted to stay and talk about anything at all. But this posse he was so lucky to not share DNA with. Aaron agreed, and we hung out. But after two rounds, he looked just sad, and we went home. He told me and Zara at my place that Anakin knew we had left things for grandfather. He told Aaron that he was surprised that I was left with anything after being disowned. Anakin was not left with any money. He was left an old record collection and one of his grandfather's cars. The rest is left to me, our mom and Aaron. Because of mom's paperwork, that means it's split between my brother and me. I can't imagine how I feel about my grandfather, leaving me anything after hating me so much for so long, or even my mom. I think he had the will as it was for decades and never bothered to change it. It doesn't really matter. Aaron thinks Anakin wanted money, though he didn't ask for it outright. He apologized to Aaron, saying he was an old man, and sometimes he said things the wrong way and backtracked a lot, saying that Aaron is his adopted son, his buddy, and he is proud of him. Aaron said that last bit made him want to vomit. He is now in my kitchen cooking with Zara, who had choice words about the whole thing. She literally got up and said, F that guy. We're eating a home-cooked meal and drank into not having him as a parent, and dragged my brother into the kitchen. I opted to sit with the dog and read y'all's messages. Anakin has left me a voicemail and texted an apology, and he wants to try to have a do-over and explain to us both. He said he loves us and is bad at showing it. He wants a chance, and that's it. BTW Zara dog didn't even get near Anakin and just glared at him and slept by Aaron's feet the entire time. She's so empathetic. I think she knew he needed her more than I did. God, I can't wait to have a dog myself. We don't deserve them. Edit. Zara shouted for me to add the quote from the show Supernatural. Family ain't only blood. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.